All right, this video, we're gonna blur stuff. We're gonna try and track faces, okay, and blur this dodgy guy. We'll blur number plates, okay. We will blur logos. See the socks? Got little blurry bits on them. <laughs> we'll track that and blur them, okay. And we'll also do some static blurring where, can you see in the top right here, I've blurred out like the date, or maybe it's an email address from a screencast. We're gonna do all that in this video. All right, let's start with blurring a face. We're gonna use the same morph cut again. Um, can use any face making sure that there's no existing uh, masks on it we're gonna kind of recap a tiny bit and show you how to use the blur so what we do is slightly different and what we need to do now is oh, I've got Lumetri applied let me get rid of him too so is we add the blur effect first and we mask that that's the kind of slight difference okay we don't use the opacity mask and we don't use Lumetri we go to effects and we say give me blur there's lots of blurs Everyone uses Gaussian Blur, because it works. First thing we'll do is turn up the blurriness, but he faults on zero. So we'll decide on how blurry a face needs to be. Like, I'm pretty distinctive. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we can change that later on. Can you see Blur has its own, um, you know, uh, ability to add a mask? So basically, there's so much, you know, the opacity has the exact same thing, so it can get confusing, but it's also really useful, because it means I can blur just this. I'm gonna use the circle, making sure at the beginning of my clip, get it kind of close and big enough. That's kind of good enough for me. Uh, how much do I blur the edges? I don't know, feel the edges that much? That's fine for me. Just know that, you know, blurring the edges of this is not what we want. We want to, this is the Gaussian blur, blurriness. We'll do the stuff in the middle there. There we go. Okay, uh, that's it. We just need to track it. Mm, circles are pretty good for track. So we're just gonna say track forward and it's gonna do its little thing, move through that clip. And hopefully we'll have a blurry face that kind of bobs around. Mm, there you go. Suspicious. Uh, let's do it with a number plate. Um, it's not going to be all that different, but let's do it. Uh, so in your project files, let's import. I use Command I there because there's no space to double click. You can see I use about ten different ways of importing, um, and I just do just whatever feels convenient at the time. Let's bring in. Uh, blur one and two. Okay, number number three, don't check it. It's a surprise for the class project. It's a little treasure there for you. I know you're gonna go check it. Uh, let's start with blue one. Let's make a sequence from it. You'll see that it is uh, Audi R8, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna use my backslash key to fill up the little line down here. And it's basically the same. I find in my effects panel, I go to Gaussian Blur, drag it on, crank it up, make it a rectangle, because it's number plates are rectangles, get it close to the sides-ish, big enough, there we go, and then smash away at that one. Like we did in the last tutorial, if it does get wayward, you're gonna have to do it frame by frame. Uh, it's hard when a car like turns off screen, you have to kind of start messing with it. There we go. All right, that's done a pretty sweet job. And um, this makes me brings up a point earlier. I said, why would you play it backwards? Uh, you play it backwards if, let's say, the car turns onto the screen and the final shot is this. Like that's our that's our final shot. Let's say that's the end of our clip. Okay, right there. And the beginning though is the car turning on, you know, onto the screen. So there's nothing really to mask there. So what you can do is get to the end here. You know, uh, draw your mask on and then say play backwards and it will go as far as it can until the car's like turning off screen getting, you know, the number plate gets too obscured and then you can fix those last few frames. So I kind of contradict myself there. What is it for? It has good use. All right, so that's blurring a number plate. Let's blur logos. Um, so same thing, except I'm gonna show you how to do more than one blur on a same kind of clip. So let's bring in uh, blur number two, we're well, not bring it in, let's just make a new sequence for blur number two. Thank you Everett. Okay, and um, you can see this one, a lot of moving around. Okay, so we need to track it, let's see how well it does. Uh, so I'm going to start at the beginning, maybe I'll start at the back. Yeah, let's start at the back. Okay, so just for giggles, okay, so when you get to the back, you notice it goes black. If you snap right to the end, you can use your left arrow just to go back one keyframe. Okay, so let's again find our fix panel. Now I'm just gonna close down Media Browser and Libraries and Info 
and markers. We're not using any of that at the moment. Let's gave both of those to open. Okay, so Gaussian Blur, dump it on the clip, crank it up. And our case, I don't know, circle, pen tool, or a rectangle. The Nike tick needs to be removed for branding reasons. Okay, happens a lot in television. It's always really awkward, right? You see people blurring out really famous brands and it just draws way more attention to them. But hey, that's, keep the lawyers happy. So uh, how does that look? I click in there, use my little zoom in shortcut. Okay. Because this guy jumps, let's see how well it's gonna track it. It needs to be big enough as well for this thing to be able to fit in. You can see this one's a lot longer because it's stretched around, so I might go like that. Let's see how that goes. A bit of a trial and error. Let's hit play to run through, see how well it tracks it. All right, let's check it out. How well did it go? Oh, it did good. Good work, Premiere Pro. Cool, I might need to blur the edges a bit more. Okay, because you can see if I click off, there's this kind of like maybe sharp bit here, which I can fix afterwards with uh, my masking uh, feather the edge. Too feathery. Something like that. Cool, so let's add a second one to get this. So you do it to the exact same clip. Okay, and you don't have two blurs, you have two masks. You can see it says mask one. Let's twirl that down so it goes away. And you can just click another one. You have mask two. Okay, and that's going to be this other one. And there's no difference. Except you do need to make sure, I always do this. I'm halfway through a clip when I start doing it. So it's better to do it at one end or the other. Get to the end, hit the backspace key, <laughs> get that kind of closer. Here we go. Nice. Feather the edge a bit. And I'm going to play that way. All right, Mask 2 did a great job. Look, <laughs> got it probably went up behind the leg. This is a really good exercise. I didn't realize I had this in here. Okay, where did it go? So it got there, gets to the end, and then it goes bah. Why does it go bah? So I am going to be uh, scrolling along till I get close. I'm using my left arrow on my keyboard. Make sure your, if your left and right arrow aren't working, you're gonna be clicking in the timeline here. I'm just gonna go along until it gets to the reason there it freaks out. I don't know why, but it's a really good example. So let's have a look at this. I'm gonna hit tilde so this gets big. I'm gonna grab all of these guys that are kind of here where it goes wrong and backwards, hit delete, and just start working on this um, individually. So let's go you, we are going to go, ooh, my shortcut is for um, step forward, right? <laughs> ah, bums. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is uh, go make another shortcut for that step backwards. Don't start at the end. All right, because I'm lazy and I wanna do that, I'm gonna start at the other end and just work towards the goodness. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm starting at this end. Every time you drag it, it's already making a keyframe. If it's not, this needs to be turned on. Don't turn it off, you'll lose all these keyframes. Okay, so let's I'll show you how I would do this now. So I'm gonna zoom in. H key for the hand tool, get kind of close, minus out a little bit, man. Okay, so that seems okay. Back to my selection tool, cool. And my, my shortcut that I made in the previous video, you might not have this one, remember mine is option S, go forward one keyframe, option S, option S, option S, option S. It's not that hard, right? Especially when it's just a rectangle. Harder when it's lots and lots of key for, um, anchor points. I need to keep an eye on this. You can click in here and you can zoom in using your plus key. You can see I've already caught up with those missing keyframes. There was that gap at the beginning, all gone. So hopefully now, let's have a little look. Uh, full screen. Full screen, let's go. There's a little bit there that I need to tidy up. Can you see it gets really long? So I need to maybe go and find those keyframes and just extend it out every single one. Yeah, nice. Two masks on the same Gaussian blur on top of the clip. Let's look at one more kind of blurring uh, thing that I, I do quite a bit of. Check it out. So the last one is uh, kind of a last minute addition to the class. So just thinking, 
I use that quite a bit. So let's import it. It's going to be the newly created blur number four, screen recordings. I do a lot of screen recordings and there's some things that just need to be um, uh, removed. So let's make a sequence from it. And let's say that you've accidentally left your secret credit card details on the screen and you need to blur that out. Or for me, often it's the time and date. I want that removed. Don't know why. <laughs> it's 19th of May. I don't want you to know that. Or let's say it's your favorites over here or it's just something on the screen. But it's consistent across the whole thing. Nothing moving, it's just a block. Uh, the other thing is, is let's say it's been edited a bit. So let's say I cut there and I cut there and it's, it's lots of different clips. Okay, so you don't want to be copying and pasting them, you know, the, the Gaussian blur from one to the other. So what I want to do is something that kind of like straddles them all. Let's say that there's three different clips, but they all have the wrong, you know, they have the time they want to remove or a barcode or something private that you want to keep to yourself, your email address. Okay, so, um, but it's static. So what we can do is we can apply the Gaussian blur to an adjustment layer. Okay, so first of all, I need an adjustment layer. So down here, project panel, adjustment layer. Okay, it's going to match my sequence. Perfect. Okay, this is going to be my blurry thing. And I can use this from project to project, which is cool. And um, so I'm going to dump it on top. I'm going to make it the right length because it needs to go across the whole thing. And I can apply it to this. And it can be, let me show you. So let's add the effect, Gaussian blur, make it super blurry. I'm going kind of fast now, I know. Um, done this before I've just applied it to this and what we can do with this is we can scale it okay so instead of doing a mask and trying to do that sort of thing it can be nice to just to grab this and see the size and the scale you can just make it like a reusable block now in terms of the scale and uh, let's where it says scale here we can unlink the uniform scale so that we can kind of make it the height we need okay not doing drag position yet so scale height versus width I'm going to go mine something like this. I'm going to move it up. You get the idea. And it's just something that sits over the top and it doesn't matter what's going on. New edits, you're moving things, re-recording stuff, that will always just stay there. Okay, it doesn't follow anything because it can't track it, but it's not meant to. Okay. Um, Let's have a look at this. My blur is probably a little hardcore for that. Same thing, if it doesn't, you know, if you need it for something else, you can have multiple ones, or at least in this case, let's say that I want to change the position. I want to make it for covering this part, okay? Because I don't want people to see what my favorites are, okay? Or obviously super secret credit card details. All right, so that is it for blurring. What do we do? We did faces, we did logos, number plates, um, and this one, kind of static things, like credit card details. That's not a credit card, obviously. <laughs> There's a random number I typed. You know that. All right, let's get on to the class exercise. You're like, I had a look, <laughs> blur number three, coming right up. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do wanna go further with Premiere Pro, you might wanna join me for my larger courses, okay, called Premiere Pro Essentials and Premiere Pro Advanced. There'll be links for both of those in the description. Hope to see you in the course. Bye.